This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and failure. Teton Pass. Yeah, bummer. I thought, am is she getting the rabies on me? I didn't know what was happening, but... <laughs> and I was thinking it'd be really fun to play Water Bucket Roulette. <laughs> Your past explorgery looks terrible. Don't get me wrong. That's not going to get me to eat everything. I'm not going to eat crickets, damn it. IFAF, Idaho Falls Weekly Informal Infotainment with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Coming up on this episode, Pioneer Day weekend, three-day weekend coming up. Get your bonnets out. For Utahns, anyway. <laughs> the Big Phil Slide, Teton Pass. Mm -hmm, what a bummer. We talk about our Bozeman trip, some of the fun things that we did, and you can do too, just three and a half hours away. Mm -hmm. Free tickets to the Sound Summer Musical this weekend. A nuclear power plant that's not in Idaho. Well, then why do we care? <laughs> and a, yeah, and a super cringy TikTok that chucks us under the bus. Well, hope you had a happy Dad's Day. Or a happy Daddy's Day. Yeah, for those without dads. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually saw a really funny shirt the other day that said, um, uh, despite what you may think, I don't have daddy issues or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it was really funny. But anyway. Should have gotten that for your dad. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, a week from today, Monday, June 24th, is Pioneer Day. Which is super culturally significant to this particular area. Yeah, that's why we're bringing it up first thing. Yeah. Uh, this weekend is a three-day weekend for Utahns. Uh, June 24th is Pioneer Day. It's a mm -hmm. state holiday for Utah. Right. So three-day weekend means probably see a lot of Utah plates on the road this weekend. Almost definitely. Well, and I know also um, a lot of LDS folk will do pi Pioneer Days, which is when they, you know, LARP as pioneers, go out into the wilderness. <laughs> LARP. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like genuinely. Yeah, they, yeah. Like they dress up as pioneers, uh -huh. go out into the wilderness, walk around. Don't they, buckets. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I think camping is involved, and and I yep. think there there is at least one event where they recreate, you know, walking across at least a stretch of land with hand carts, like yeah. our like our forefathers. And yep. mothers did. Mm -hmm. yeah. I personally never participated because the whole shitting in buckets thing was just not for me. That's not a thing you do. No, I don't. I don't do that. That actually leads us straight into the first follow-up. <laughs> I only went to no, girls. No, guys, don't, don't, don't do that again. <laughs> I genuinely only went to girls camp when we when I knew that we'd have bathrooms. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying I like glamping, but... I am. <laughs> I don't know. What we did last week, and we'll get into that with the tiny home, was as close as I want to get. Yeah. I, yeah I would get a little closer, but only a little our first follow-up, no, Mike, it's not the she-pee, it's the she-we. I was way oh, off. You were, uh, you, I'd say you were so close. Even though on their website they do offer something called a she-pee, but what we're oh. talking about is if you're a lady who likes to camp and likes to go standing up and needs a little help, mm -hmm. here's the website. Yeah. How to stand up without the dribble. You can see these devices, and I'm, I'm not going to try to explain it again. <laughs> But you can imagine, ladies, how that would work. Right. And I guess they recommend practicing in the bathtub a few times. That's hilarious. Or, or in the shower. <laughs> yeah. I, That's funny. <laughs> probably not the bath. Not while you're taking a bath, but in the bathtub yeah. while the shower's going. <laughs> right, right. Whatever Although, your setup is. I'm sure if there was a little bit of water, you know, it would kind of help you yeah, to drain acoustically it away. hear, yeah. you know, yeah. if you were hitting the right place. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So that's what it's called, and it's available, and just so you know, I wasn't lying. <laughs> so right. wait, what's the difference between a she-we and a she-pee? Well, I don't know. I think <laughs> I looked at the website, and I was like, I feel dirty even screenshotting this, but uh, I think the she-we is the product, but the she-pee is the whole kit, Oh, be because they've got like the she-we, yeah. and then the whole she-pee kit has like a bottle in it, if you're on oh. the road, maybe. I don't know. Oh, I just okay. glossed over it and was done with That's it. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Why don't they have those for dudes? <laughs> Sexist. <laughs> you know, I think they're going for more like equity than like perfect equality there. Right. You know? <laughs> uh, equal outcome, not equal opportunity. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Because the opportunities aren't equal. Because men and women are different. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Biologically? Well, I mean, yeah. That there seems are... to be an unpopular opinion these days. Well, no, that's like there are biological differences between the sexes and there's actually more similarity between the sex. Like there's more differences within the sexes than between the sexes. Yeah. Um, but realistically, even if we're just talking gender, 
you know, gender roles of like men and women, like there's still very different, like there are huge differences between men and women socially. Right. Too. And I, you know, it's funny. We devoted, I don't know, 10 minutes of the last two shows to Pride Month. We're wearing our fun colors. Yeah. This, by the way, I got for donating blood Mm -hmm. at the American Red Cross. Which I love. So fun. So 80s. And it's Tetris's 40th anniversary, I want to say, 1984. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right about there. Yeah. And, and of course, a great fit because the Red Cross symbol is the, it looks like it could fall right into a Tetris board and be playable. Right. Which, which is super fun. And I do like that a lot. But three poignant pride memes that I saw this month were, first, people's reaction to Pride Month is exactly why we need Pride Month. I would agree with that. Uh, the other one was less prejudice, more pride. Mm-hmm. And the third one was, hey, uh, think of us as the flagpole to the pride flag. We're straight. We're not part of the flag, but we are supporting it. I like that. That's nice. Yeah. All right. (laughs) Really, at the end of the day, I think that it could just be called Don't Be Dicks to Each Other Month. Yeah. Yeah. Like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Mm -hmm. Be excellent to each other. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wholesome. So the Shiwi was the first follow-up. Second follow-up from Kevin. Mm Mm-hmm who is one of our loyal regulars. And I know we have other loyal regulars, and I want to thank you if you're one of them. Uh, But Kevin always seems to have something to say. He Mm -hmm. said, uh, you know, my mom worked at the Idaho Chemical Processing Plant. The acronym is ICPP. (laughs) ICPP. (laughs) Giggle like school children. I I genuinely didn't really see that coming until you started saying the acronym, and then by then it was too late. Yeah. That's funny. Uh (laughs) Thanks, Kevin. Also, and this is why we don't do news on this show. We had, uh, because we had to get to Bozeman for a wedding that we'll talk about here in a little bit, uh, we recorded our show on a Friday night. We usually do Friday or Saturday night. Right. And it drops on Monday. We recorded our show Friday night. And said, hey, might want to avoid Teton Pass for a minute. Right. And then Saturday morning, it just critical fail. Right. Yeah. Collapse. Catastrophic collapse. Mm-hmm. So Y Dot has some great footage. Let's play it all here. Here's a before and an after of Teton Pass. Take a look. Now, I have to assume that they got this footage because once they noticed the crack in Teton Pass, mm-hmm. they took some drone footage. And then once it collapsed, they said, let's see if we can get it almost exactly the same and match it up. Right. Well done, YDOT. That's amazing. Yeah, I want to know who their drone pilot is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if he pathed it or she pathed it the exact same way. I don't know how you can do that. Yeah, I don't know. But And where would we be without drone photography? Okay, mm-hmm. let's show this too. Here's some drone footage of part of the actual slide. It's being called the Big Phil slide. Yeah. I assume because that's fill dirt that's been placed there. I mean, that would make the most sense. Does Big modify the fill dirt or the slide? Yeah. Not sure. Mm -hmm. Let's just roll some general footage here while we talk about it. But why not? Thank you. Um, It's so cool to see with our own special eyes. Mm Mm-hmm. And we're sorry that happened to you, Mm -hmm. but the governor declared a state of emergency. They just awarded, I think, a $430,000 contract to a construction company to do the detour. They're hoping for two weeks. just the detour? Just the detour, I believe. Damn. So Wyoming is saying, hey, look, you can still come visit Yellowstone. I mean, it's the middle of the tourist season. Oh, I know. Right. You can still come visit. Just find an alternate route. <laughs> right, right. And you can. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that hard. I mean, I know right. it's not that easy, but it's not that hard. Right. I know, <laughs> you know? My son is in Jackson right now. Right. Yeah. And I was just thinking, too, like, I, I actually remember someone saying at the wedding, oh, I wonder how they're going to get down there. <laughs> yeah. But it's e- it's easy to go around. Yeah. You know, go through Holback, Alpine, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's easy to get there. We just had no idea. We're like, boy, something's not good with Teton Pass. And then mm-hmm. catastrophic fail. Yeah. Honestly, the bi- <laughs> the biggest thing I'm kind of wondering is how they're going to go about fixing this. Yeah. Like, are they just going to try to rebuild, like build the dirt back up? I almost wonder if it would. Well, and here's someone who has literally no construction. Not civil engineers here. Not even a little. But I almost wonder if it would make more sense to do a nice little dip or something. I you know? know? Like sort of like 
you know, so that you don't have to fill. I mean, I'm assuming there's a reason they filled it in the first place. There's got to be some benefit to doing it that way instead of being like, let's just go down a hill and then up a hill. <laughs> I'm always fascinated by feats but of yeah. engineering, especially through the mountains. Right. You know, those those train bridges and then boring right through the mountain. And mm-hmm. I mean, and we did that, you know, in the late 1800s. Right. Yeah, we were doing all kinds of crazy stuff with dynamite. 150 years ago. Man, think of all the fingers lost. Yeah, dynamite and John Henry mm-hmm. swinging that hammer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also in Yellowstone, while we're on Yellowstone, we want to mention the reported birth of a rare white buffalo in Yellowstone National Park, which apparently fulfills an ancient Lakota prophecy. Yeah. How crazy is that, by the way? And not ominous not ominous at all. No. Like, <laughs> we've had some pretty wacky stuff It's a stuff good prophecy. Like, I'm just saying... We're having all of these cicadas, okay? We just had COVID, like... (laughs) This isn't part of the end times, we don't think. (laughs) Well, I guess when firstborn suns start dropping, we'll know. Yeah, when the seventh son of the seventh son does something. Yeah, right? Anyway, the ancient Lakota prophecy portends better times. Well, but also comes with a warning. And cautions us that it's also a signal that more must be done to protect the earth and its animals. Right. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, no shit. I mean, yeah, right? (laughs) Should have, should have been thinking along those lines anyway. Yeah. 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 I mean, about time. But that's kind of cool. Yeah. You know what? Honestly, if this is the thing that makes people decide to like not be shitty to the only place that we have to live, uh, I don't know what it would take. (laughs) You know, like, like it would be kind of funny if this is the thing that does it. Well, I, and I wonder, you know? are there any other cool parts of the prophecy? Like, will it breathe fire out its nose? I Probably mean, not. When, when it hits its teen years, will it develop mutant powers? My guess is that they don't actually expect it to necessarily live long. Oh, okay. Um, I think it's mostly just a symbol rather than like, I don't think that the animal itself to them has any special magical properties. You know, it's more. But it's just a, a it, sign. It's a sign. That, yeah. 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 But realistically, like where it is a white bison, it's not unlikely that it could actually be, you know, um, ostracized by its herd because it's going to look different. We'll feed you, buddy. Not only that, but also it's going to be more susceptible to predators because it's not naturally camouflaged. Yeah. I uh, wonder, do, do they, I mean, is this a, uh, not a golden calf, but is this uh, something that they're going to protect now? You know, give it a nice life mm-hmm. in a nice fenced off area. With its immediate family, I don't, or or do they let nature take its course? I don't know. You know, that's kind of what I want to know too. I feel like it could kind of go either way. Yeah. You know, I almost sort of lean toward let's make sure this thing lives. Like let's take care of it. Yeah, give it a comfy life, a but, nice barn. <laughs> but I mean, also that's because I'm a white woman and I want to take every <laughs> little critter home. <laughs> There's this uh, TikTok I saw. Carly of, wants to hug every kitty. I you do. can't hug every kitty. <laughs> I actually saw this TikTok of a chick holding a possum with its mouth open, looking very upset. Terrifying, by <laughs> the way. Those things, yeah, they look right, scary. Right. And she's just talking to her boyfriend like, oh, can we keep him? <laughs> and he's like, honey, he's literally drooling out of his mouth. And no, you cannot keep him. And she goes, oh, kisses it on the head and and. Give, and like, let's go of it. Yeah. Just a reminder to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've placed a special link in this post that'll automatically subscribe you. Really need some YouTube subscribers. We've got a goal of 500 uh, in the next few months and would love for you to be a part of that. And we'd like to give you something. How about free tickets to the Sounds Summer Musical, The King and I? Always fun. Uh, I love a little musical theater. Yeah. Opens this Friday. It's Friday the 21st, Saturday the 22nd, off Sunday, Mm -hmm. then back again for the 24th and 25th. Mm -hmm. We have free tickets to the first four people who email info at ifafpod.com. That's info at ifafpod.com. We'd love to give you those free tickets. It's a pair for any night you want to go, any of those four nights. And then also in the post, we have a link to our promo code that'll mm-hmm. save you 10%. So if you're not one of the f- first four people that emails us and gets in free, we've got a 10% off coupon code for you. We'll give that to you right now. At checkout, use code PLAY-ZLPK-24 and save 10%. Nice. And Sound Summer Musical in their 47th year. You are IFAF this week. Chris Pie 5. <laughs> 21 finger gun salute pew, pew. and chef's kiss to you, to you and your fine board of directors of which I am a member. <laughs>
Okay, just a couple of leftovers. And by leftovers, I mean things we've wanted to fit into previous shows and there just wasn't time, mm -hmm. which is why we're doing them up front. Okay. We're filling that jar with big rocks first. <laughs> but, but they're not big rocks because they didn't take priority. But we're doing... Okay. Yeah. Anyway, somebody put Tom's Shoe Repair on First Street on blast a couple of weeks ago. Oh, really? And I don't want to really talk too much about um, what they said. Different people have different customer experiences, and I get that, right. fine, whatever. Yeah, I've had plenty of great customer experiences with Tom. I really like his, Okay. I, I think he does great work. Great. You know? And, yeah, I've had a thing or two that he can't fix. Yeah. It happens. And he's, I guess he doesn't even need to be doing this. Right. He's like nine years past his retirement age. Yeah. So he's just doing it to do it. Well, and we know? have no other cobblers in town, really. I don't think we do. Yeah, at least no official businesses. Yeah. You know. And that was why I was so grateful because one Andrea Sweat mm -hmm. uh, replied to that post and said, hey, my husband Michael does it. So I just want to give mad props to Michael Sweat for fixing my Johnston and Murphy's mm -hmm. just in time for the wedding. Right. Yeah, even polished them up for you. Yeah. So cool. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's one thing I love about the... Facebook community group pages. Right. Is you find people like that. You know, there are so many talented people in this area that just work out of their home and work mm -hmm. by word of mouth. Yeah. And I love that, you know, yeah. I can find them. Yes. You know, and that's the, the thing. Done. There have been so many times when I've needed random stuff like that, and there are no businesses that do it. And so, I, of course, I've never even thought of going on Facebook and being like, hey, guys, do you know where I could get a this thing? I never but thought yeah. either. And I think I'm going to start. Right. I think it's kind of the move. Right. Okay. And another one, too. We've been meaning to put this up, I think, for a couple months. Mm -hmm. I just want it because I've said it, but I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you the proof that McDonald's is the biggest offender when it comes to corporate price gouging disguised as inflation. Mm -hmm. I want you to take a look at this graph. Notice it's from 2014 to 2024. So it's reflective of the last 10 years. Right. All the way at the top, market leader McDonald's with 100% inflation. Meaning, wow. Meaning if your Big Mac cost, you know, five bucks 10 years ago, it's now 10. 10. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just want to point that out. Right. Because I was talking to, oh, Kevin, uh -huh. <laughs> here's he sent us his favorite crackers. Used to be a seven ounce package, uh -huh. and now it's got a new look, an exciting new look, and it's also six point one ounces. Right, probably for the same price or more. Right, yeah, yeah. super so, frustrating. Yeah, just just wanted to throw those two things out there, and um, shame on you. How dare they? McDonald's and those crackers. I forgot the brand name. I don't right. remember. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bozeman trip? Yeah. All right. My son that I talked about last episode, Major Chase Nelson. He made Major in um, 10 years. That's pretty impressive. In the Marine Corps, yeah. Yeah. So you, I don't even know anything about the Marines, and I know that's impressive. Yeah, so you started second lieutenant, and then first lieutenant, and then captain, mm -hmm. and then Major. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Just had his big change of command ceremony. Mm -hmm. And he was like deployed for 250 some odd days. Well, right, right. Got to come back, actually, you know, get married, live his life. They're honeymooning currently mm -hmm. uh, in Jackson. Mm -hmm. And I, I put him up at the Four Seasons for his wedding <laughs> present. They're going to do some whitewater rafting. Which is pretty cool. Take the gondola up. Mm -hmm. You know, they've already done horseback riding. I'm following his Instagram closely. Oh, cool. <laughs> But it sounds but yeah, like they're having a really good time. A really good time. I'm kind of shocked he has time to Instagram it. And I Right. You know, just because it sounds so action-packed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and he doesn't Instagram shit while yeah, he's right. deployed because I remember the mm -hmm. first time uh, he got deployed and he was able to call me. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, buddy. You know, I asked the standard questions. Where are you at? What you doing? And he yeah. said, hey, dad, there's something I need to introduce you to. <laughs> it's a military term called OPSEC. Yeah. Operational security. Mm -hmm. He said, so because of OPSEC, I can't tell you any, I can't answer the questions you've just asked. <laughs> right. So I read about them later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once once the deployment is done. Right, right. The maneuvers are done. Then I, oh, he was in the Middle East doing a thing. Yeah. Wild, <laughs> yeah. huh? <laughs> Killing a dictator. No, I don't know what he's doing. I really don't. No. But um, we wanted to talk about our Bozeman trip because... Uh, part of the uh, acronym IFAF mm -hmm. 
could could be Idaho Falls and friends, meaning surrounding areas. In fact, we're going to talk about Wyoming coming up here in a minute because they got something interesting going on. Mm -hmm. But Bozeman is such a freaking easy drive. It is. You know, it's about the same as Salt Lake, which I feel like all of us have done without really batting an eye at it. Right, exactly. And Salt you know? Lake is all I-15. Right, which this does is... make it a lot easier. Like, there are definitely some windy bits of, yeah. you know, the Bozeman trip that I did not like very much. But... Well, and that's why you drove between Idaho Falls and West Yellowstone. That's mm -hmm. the first 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I drove from West Yellowstone to Bozeman. That's all the curvy, that's all the fun stuff, <laughs> <Right>. I think. <laughs> yeah, I love that we have the exact opposite preferences. It yeah. makes things so much easier. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> yeah. And, um, oh, and by the way, we took Carly's car, which is your yes. Sub. <laughs> yeah, my Sub, which was amazing on gas, by the way. Oh, yeah. Like we, okay, so we filled it up right before we went. By the time we got there, the needle was just barely below the F. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in West <laughs> Yellowstone, it was still above the F mm -hmm. after driving for 90 minutes. Yeah. But we hit a bird. Yeah. It hit the driver's side. I, I was going to say, I don't know if we hit the bird so much as the bird hit us. <laughs> I think it must have been on the road. And I didn't even see it because mm -hmm. I'm you know, locked on the middle of the road. Right. And in my peripheral, I see a bird hit the driver's side, side view mirror. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I didn't even have time to react. But it just, you know, we heard this thunk. Right. Anyway, it blew off the... Um, the back casing of my side mirror. So if or the front who, casing. The, well, I guess it depends on... Facing yeah. the front of the car. Yeah, facing the front of the car, but it's the back of the mirror, I guess. Front ca back casing if you're looking at the side view mirror. Right, right. But anyway, uh, yeah, so if you have a total 2019 white Subaru <laughs> Legacy that you want to like get rid of the side view mirror casing on, you let me know. <laughs> so Carly says... <laughs> This is how her mind works. It's amazing to watch. <laughs> I've, I've said it on this show before. You are an amazing problem solver. <laughs> I try to be. You're, I mean, like 30 seconds later, she's like, uh, okay, I think when we stop in West Yellowstone, I'm going to get a little hot dog tray and some masking tape. And that ought to be a makeshift, you know, side view mirror. Right. Well, because the wind kept hitting case. the inside of the mirror. And, and the like, mirror was rattling. Making it rattle. <laughs> yeah. And sure enough, we went to, I mean, she MacGyvered it in like, here's a picture. <laughs> yeah. I think it cost all of like five, <laughs> like five bucks for the tape because it's a gas station, Yeah, which also the worst masking tape I've ever used in my life. <laughs> I could not get a single strip to just like pull without tearing. Yeah. It was the worst. <laughs> that, that stuff had to have been like 20 years old or something like that. But it worked. Yeah, it did what it needed to. Hence the phrase, if it's <laughs> stupid and it works, it's not stupid. <laughs> yeah. So was, right. I, I thought that was impressive. Yeah, it is still currently on my car. I'm not getting the yeah. new car for a few days now. <laughs> yeah. and I, It's honestly, so ghetto. I, right. It looks so bad. Every time I see it, I just feel shame. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I almost want to put a note on it, like, just waiting for the part <laughs> so that people don't think that I live my life like this. Or just park the car in a Walmart parking lot. <laughs> Right at this point. Well, and the worst you know. part is I can't even. So it got filthy <laughs> in Montana. I don't know what it is about that place that is just. Well, when we drove through the pine trees, th right. there was all that yellow pollen. Right. On yeah. a breezy day. Yeah. But anyway, it's completely filthy. And I can't even take it to a car wash because the wires and stuff inside of my mirror are exposed. So I've got to fix it first, then clean it. We notice that spring comes later in Bozeman. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you ever like miss the lilacs blooming, all you got to do is wait a couple of weeks, drive north mm -hmm. three and a half hours. Yeah. And you were able to get pick some lilac blooms. I was, which I'm really excited for. I'm going to make some lilac lemonade out of them. But Montana is sort of a nice little um, lawless, godless place. <laughs> which I it's really dug about vices. it personally. <laughs> It's got the weed. Mm -hmm. It's got your liquor store slash casinos. Right. I mean, I guess I had forgotten about most of that. Honestly, I guess I didn't realize that gambling was legal in Montana. Yeah. Until we got there and then I saw the casinos. Because, like, I sort of assumed it was sort of like Idaho, like Idaho and Idaho Falls and stuff where it's legal but only on the reservation. Right. You know, and so that's sort of what I was expecting. But then it's, like, everywhere. It's like in gas stations, yeah. you know, and the fact that their liquor stores stay open till 2 a.m. 
First of all, apparently they know how to party. (laughs) (laughs) So good for them. Bozeman, Montana. Yeah. Knows how to party. Yeah. We went into one and Mm -hmm. threw a couple 20s into a machine Mm -hmm. and spent like an hour there slowly going broke. Right. Well, okay. Here's the thing. And just BS and it was fun. I am the worst gambler. Mm -hmm. Okay. No matter what I do, I never win. Like every year for Christmas, my parents get us all a bunch of lottery tickets. And I, as far as I can think, am the only one who's never gotten more than the value of the lottery tickets like if they would have just given me the money they spent on them i would have ended up with more whereas like my brother he's i think he's won like a hundred bucks or something before you know same with my parents i'm the only one who never has and then same with when we went to gamble there were a couple of times when you had actually doubled your money you know yeah i put in a 20 and i I got it all the way up to 70 before i played it all the way back down again (laughs) right with me I, i never got above 20 okay yeah i always stayed within that 20 dollar range (laughs) So that was fun. And we stayed in this tiny home. It was tiny. It was. I mean, was it as big as an RV or maybe even a little smaller? Uh, I want to say. You know, I would say, yeah, like a like a small RV size. You walk in the front door. There's a living room. Right. And then as you kind of go through, do you know what a shotgun house is? I don't, actually. They're, they have them in Louisiana. They're these long, thin... Oh, homes yeah, yeah. that you could probably put on the back of a trailer bed. Right, I've seen those. Yeah, and mm-hmm. meaning you could, and and the term shotgun comes from you could shoot a shotgun through the yeah from the front to the back. Right, but uh, yeah, so shotgun home kind of like that as you saw in the picture: living room in the front, then kitchen, then bathroom, mm-hmm. and then a couple of lofts upstairs right. for sleeping. Uh huh. So, Which was kind of a wild experience in and of itself, too. It was. I've always wanted to do it. Thank you for doing it with me. Yeah, it was really fun. Uh, and I don't know if I would do it again. I mean, okay. It's definitely not, it's not bad enough to say I would never do it again. Mm-hmm. Realistically, I would do it again. Like it's about, I mean, square footage wise, it's a little smaller than a hotel room, but it was nice that we actually had like a kitchen and stuff. Yeah. Although we didn't have a microwave. Which most hotel rooms have, and I would have liked right. one of those. Yeah, we didn't know. We had to pan fry our Hot Pockets. <laughs> yes, although they are really good that way. <laughs> they are. So. <laughs> it, and and uh, it did kind of suck having to climb down a ladder in the middle of the night to pee. <laughs> there were a couple of times when I heard you going down the ladder, and I was like, oh, be careful. Yeah, you know, like I'd wake up and be like, oh, be careful. <laughs> Just fall right back asleep. But yeah, because I was genuinely afraid that you were going to like fall to your death or something. I didn't. Thankfully. <laughs> but the, as interesting as that all was, it was it was doable. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted really... to just exist in that size space mm-hmm. and it was pleasant. Yeah, it really wasn't bad. The coolest part to me was we had a house cat. Yes. That only came around once in the oh, three days we were there. Which I was so sad about. We even ended up like pulling a can of cat food out of my trunk that I keep there for any little strays that I find. <laughs> she yeah. wants to hug every kitty. <laughs> I do. <laughs> but yeah, they texted the owner and she said, oh yeah, that's Snoop. Isn't that so funny? Here's a picture of Snoop in the wild. And then here's a picture of Snoop on my lap <laughs> because I'm a cat whisperer. Yeah, she kind of loved you. I'm like, okay, this is happening. And I'm petting her and staring at my memes, mm-hmm. you know, on cat memes. Yeah. On my course. phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how you have the real thing in front of you and you're yeah. still like, I'll just go, I'll just go electronic. <laughs> I'm ridiculous. I know. She's probably jealous. Right. No, but I felt a drop of water on my hand. And then uh-huh. it happened a couple other times. I'm like, this cat is drooling. Yeah. But it was, it was a very regulated drooling. <laughs> yeah. It was just a drop. Every 60 seconds or so. Uh-huh. So I had to Google it. Yes. And I guess, totally normal. Uh, yeah. yeah. I thought, am, is she getting the rabies on me? I didn't know what was <laughs> happening, but I guess some cats get so content mm-hmm. that they drool a little bit. When I was a kid, I had a cat named uh, Ducky, uh-huh. who we'd call, well, his real name was Lucky, but we'd call him Ducky. Um, but he would drool when you pet him. Oh, Yeah. And it, okay. was, it was really and sweet. I, and I gave he her some nice scrubbins. Like I sensed her energy, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like we've talked about this before, you always start soft. You gotta start soft mm-hmm. because nobody doesn't like soft. Yeah, right. And then you know if if they're like you really know, leaning into throw it, throw their shoulders into it. Yeah, then you go for it. Yeah. But I, you know, what a life being a <laughs> being an outdoor cat in Bozeman, Montana, in the summer. Mm-hmm. On the one hand, has got to be great. On the other hand, with so much drama in the BMT, it's kind of hard being Snoop C A double T. You know, I imagine. What? 
<laughs> I'm sure it is. But you know, somehow, some way, yeah. she kept coming up with funky cat shit nearly every single day. <laughs> May I kick a litter box from a seas? Okay, I'm done. <laughs> she doesn't use a litter box. She's an outdoor cat. I'm done. But it sounds That's like funny. litter. Okay. No, you're right. I know. I know. I'm just, it's funny. On that note, if you want to move to Montana and sell your home, we're here to help. <laughs> I love that, actually. Let's do it. We know that selling your home can be a scary proposition. What data do you believe? There's national news stories. Do they apply to us here in Idaho? That's why you need experienced realtors. Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan, when we're not cracking jokes on this show, we actually are a little serious helping people sell their homes. Well, and you know that we tell it real here. So, of course, we're going to tell it real to you if you make us your realtors. I see what you did there. <laughs> Thank you. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> if it's time to sell your home or investment property, we are here to guide you along the way. Email info at IFAFpod to get your free property valuation. Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan are brokered by Keller Williams Realty, East Idaho. That's info at IFAFpod.com. Do you have any grilling plans for this Pioneer Day weekend? What are you going to throw down on that grill? Hamburger, ribeye steaks, sirloin steaks, porterhouse, New York strip, T-bone, prime rib roast, brisket, all that stuff. Well, if you want to impress with the best, you got to go with Virgin River Land and Cattle Company. They source local Angus and Angus crossbreeds fed on green Idaho pastures and finished with a locally sourced corn and grain for rich beef flavor. So if you're celebrating Pioneer Day weekend 2024 or just want to throw something down on the grill in the summertime, hit up Virgin River Land and Cattle Company on Facebook. You can order every month or when you run out. And be sure to use promo code IFAF to save 15%. That's Virgin River Land and Cattle Company. Find them on Facebook. Are you planning a wedding this summer? DIY Wedding and Events just posted this amazing picture of what they did for someone's barn wedding where they actually added some draping to the ceiling. It makes it look so much more elegant and just prettier, more romantic. So if you're wanting some help to get your barn, barn wedding ready, contact DIY Wedding and Event Rentals. Yeah, they have all sorts of ideas just like this one to make your wedding or event memorable. You know, when we went to my son's wedding in Bozeman, they had a drink trailer. Mm -hmm. And that was so much fun, wasn't it? Was it was <laughs> so much fun. I was really impressed with all the little details they had. So you can plus any event with one of those as well at DIY Wedding and Event Rentals. Call or text 208-403-2040 today. 208-403-2040. Items are renting fast, so hit them up. Drop our name IFAF to save 15%. So that's our tiny home. Let's talk about our experience at uh, really the two restaurants that the most people talked about up front and afterwards. Right. When yes. they said, oh, where'd you go? Did you go to Meh? Uh huh. And one of the Meh's was Stacy's. That was where we went our very first night there as soon as we got in. And it was so good. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's an old converted brothel. Yeah. Yeah, which, you know, there are kind of a lot of those, as a matter of fact. I mean, and I know we have some of those here in Idaho Falls. We do. Some of the buildings downtown used mm -hmm. to be. Yeah. We used to be a drinking whore in town. What happened to us? <laughs> yeah, we need to get back to our roots. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I actually heard once, uh, one of the <laughs> people who worked at the museum was talking about an old letter that a brothel... Uh, I think it was like a madam wrote to her landlord and she basically said like, Hey, I'm so sorry. I'm really sick. But as soon as I get back on my back, I'll get you paid. First of all, right. I love the humor. Good wow. for her. <laughs> but yeah. And also that is one profession that you cannot work sick. Yeah. Not really. Yeah, I, no. yeah. You I know? wouldn't want to be on either end of that. No, same. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, but at Stacy's they had we got the steak, of course. Of course, yeah, you beef got the steak. Country. I got some walleye because I'm a fish girl. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they had some dill pickle soup. Oh, let me talk about the dill pickle soup. Yeah. So the entire time we were eating this, I was just trying to figure out how to recreate it, and I was actually very pleasantly surprised that it came out the way I envisioned it. Because okay. when they said dill pickle soup, I thought to myself, okay, there are two ways they could go with this. They could do like a beef broth base with dill pickle pieces in it. But I was like, okay, but realistically, the better way that they would want to do that, I think, would be like a creamy dill 
like a dill cream soup with dill pickle pieces in it. Almost like a pickle chowder. Yes. Or a cream of pickle. Yes. As yeah. weird as that sounds. It does sound weird, right? And thankfully, it was the creamy kind, which is what I was hoping it would be. And um, it was kind of more like a ranch pickle soup. Yes. Yeah. Right. One of the things I love about living in Idaho are all the Mormon snacks. Right. Including ranch and dill pickles. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to have to take some time to recreate that soup. Maybe even find a way to make it like a little carlified, you know, like mm-hmm. make it air quotes better to my taste. We also yeah. had the uh, Rocky Mountain oysters. Yes. <laughs> I never would have tried them ever. Oh, really? But you've been on this exotic meat kick. I have. And I'm like, ah, oh, what the hell? Yeah. I, th- I think I said, let's do it for the pod. Right. Well, and realistically, too, <laughs> if so many people are eating it, it can't be that bad. Yeah. That's sort of the route I'm going. Now- don't get me wrong. That's not going to get me to eat everything. I'm not going to eat crickets, damn it. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> but, you know, everything else. Not even on Pioneer Day? No. Not even to help out the no. Mormon cricket population? Especially not to help out the Mormon <laughs> cricket population. <laughs> I will leave that to the seagulls. That is their right. job. <laughs> I'm not stealing work from those sweet little waterfowl. <laughs> Tell you what, we won't feed the seagulls McDonald's <laughs> fries on Pioneer Day so they can go and eat some Mormon crickets. There we go. Perfect. But, yeah, the... the uh, they tasted like chicken. I hate to say it, yeah, but they kind of, as you can see here, mm-hmm. they kind of came in nugget form. Mm-hmm. They certainly looked like the outside of a, if you don't know <laughs> what Rocky Mountain oysters are, they're, they'll just say it. They're bull balls. Yeah, bull testicles. Um, and, I, and I asked, I said, is this the inside or the outside? And she says, oh, that's the inside. Yeah. But they're so smashed. Mm-hmm. How? <laughs> and I really felt like I was betraying my own. <laughs> right, I bet. Like, I eating bet. those balls. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever had balls in your mouth before then? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> um, but <laughs> thank goodness the deep fried breadedness mm-hmm. surrounding the thing was two thirds of the nugget. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, realistically, between the deep fried, uh, you know, breading mm-hmm. and the sauces, like you didn't really taste much else. Right. You know, those things so how tasted did they like taste? whatever you dipped them in. No idea. <laughs> it tasted like fried something in ranch, dipped yeah. in ranch. Fried giblets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that Carl's Jr. commercial? I think they were launching their chicken tenders or something. Uh-huh. But the tagline was, because chickens don't have nuggets. And then, the boy chickens do. <laughs> Kidding. Right. They're looking at the chicken. <laughs> right. Those poor those poor molested little chickens. So we ate the beef nuggets and yeah. um, you know, one in Rome. Yeah. I thought it was nice. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> um, then everybody was telling us to go check out Jam in downtown Bozeman, so we went. And I'm so glad we did. Oh man. So cool. Okay, so when we were there, I got, of course, the eggs Benny flight. And it was the best. So I ba- so they have four different versions of Eggs Benedict that you can get. They have the standard. Yes. Then they have a Chicken and Waffles Eggs Benedict. Mm-hmm. The Mia Eggs Benedict. And the Chicken and Waffles Eggs Benedict substitutes the, the English muffin at the bottom with a waffle. Right, because of course. Little maple syrup dribbled, dribbled uh-huh. over the top. Mm-hmm. A little gravy, too. And then some hollandaise uh. on top of that. Sauce on sauce on sauce. And you said the Caprese... Yeah, so the Mia one was sort of a caprese thing yeah. going on. So tomato, it had, mozzarella, mm-hmm. balsamic vinegar, mm-hmm. and, and a, a little prosciutto. A little prosciutto, mm-hmm. and you plus it. That was an extra, but I think it was worth it. Was it was so good, so good. Yeah, and all of these had poached eggs and hollandaise on top, and then right, and then the last one was a crab cake, eggs Benedict, which didn't sound all that good, but oh, was. I Fantastic. And of course, because I love seafood, that was the one that I was like, ooh, that's the one I'm excited for. But I think that I ended up liking the Mia one a hair better. Only a hair. And only because that balsamic was just slapping. It was so good. It was so good. And now, if you've never heard of, like, what's a flight, there are beer flights and wine flights and whiskey flights oftentimes presented to you as a progression where, you know, you sort of start light and right. work your way up to the richest one. Right. Like if you were doing a chocolate flight, you might start with a white chocolate over here and end right. with like a dark chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. So those four egg Benedicts, a flight was any, pick any three. Mm-hmm. So you had the chicken and waffles, the Mia, yeah. and the crab cake one. Anyway, if you have a chance to go to Jam, it's downtown Bozeman. Good mm-hmm. luck parking. Right. But right. 
we were able to do that. And then we went to, did a little shopping afterwards. And Carly, uh-huh. I think I might be getting into sound bowls. Yeah, you were really into that. So let's bookmark that, I don't know, for an episode where we have more time. Yeah. It was a fantastic time mm-hmm. and it's always fun, especially in little old Idaho Falls where we get so kind of myopic. It's always mm-hmm. fun to pull back 10, 20,000 feet and be somewhere else for a minute. Right. I completely agree. And then it's so great to come home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. The one piece of advice I'll give is take more money for shopping than you expect to. Bozeman is a little more bougie, isn't it? It is. It is. Matter of fact, we actually saw that really cool piece of art called glamping Yes, in one of the windows of the shops on our way to jam. Check this out. And Carly had to point it out to me. It was in an art gallery. And I just thought, oh, that's a setting in the Old West. But the teepee is Louis Vuitton. Yeah. Which I thought was really funny. I sort of thought that it was maybe a commentary on people sort of taking these Western places and making them sort of, you know, millionaire modified. Yeah, the joke in Jackson is the billionaires have pushed the millionaires out of Jackson Hall. Right. Now, since it's summer, we've kind of got to talk about splash pads. Oh, yeah. It's not a pool. It's not a water park. It's just enough, I think. Now, here's the biggest thing that I like about it. Basically, all of the splash pads around here, with very few exceptions, are free. Yes. Which is super nice. You walk up, (laughs) you get wet. Yeah. (laughs) You walk away. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I help out with a couple of kids and um, I don't have, like, I'm not going to go and spend money every week. Like, I I can't afford, I can't fund their lifestyle. (laughs) I can fund their lifestyle, but not fund their lifestyle. In this economy? (laughs) Yeah, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The one that we ended up going to was the one in McCown Park. Now, here's the one downside to it. It is right next to their pool. So you might have kids saying, they get a but I want to go to the pool. Yeah. yeah, right, right. But it has a big splash pad with like slides, like little water slides. It's got all these cool little daisies shooting water. It's got these really cute mushrooms that like pour water down the sides, but you can get in underneath them and it's kind of magical. Um, and then it also has a little park right next to it. So the kids can like dry off and go play on the park equipment or they can, you know, go back to the splash pad and get wet again. Get wet, go swing to dry off. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Which I thought was really cool. Um, But there's also the Reinhardt one, which is over on the west side of town. That one is a little smaller, um, but it does have this really cute water tower looking one. And then there is this other one that's kind of out by Iona, kind of near my parents that I don't know the name of, but it's a little smaller. It doesn't look as fun as some of the others. Sorry, guys. But it's nice because it's all the way over there. It is what it is. I like the McCowan one because it's kind of right in the middle and it's really big and it's got all these extra amenities. It's got these great like picnic tables with covers and stuff and it's all free. Uh, Like they have a little like water bucket tower. So it's, you know, kind of a big tower that shoots water at the top already but then they've also got these buckets that when they fill up enough they'll pour out they dump yeah (laughs) and i was thinking it'd be really fun to play water bucket roulette (laughs) (laughs) you know you and three friends each get under a bucket and like you stand there until one dumps and that's who loses (laughs) okay or wins oh it depends on how hot of a day it is yes exactly (laughs) and how cold the water is but that's yeah that that's a fun compromise to going somewhere and doing something but not having to pay for the pool right back in my day we just had a turtle pool and a slip and slide (laughs) all right uh big news big news in the nuclear industry no it's not the inls they're they're getting a reactor right we talked about that a few episodes ago Uh uh-huh they sure are i wonder if it's a natrium reactor and i don't even know know if a natrium plant i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right so i don't even know what that is (laughs) or or, or if they have an iccp in there somewhere uh-huh. Or ICPP? Wait. <laughs> what was it? ICPP. Okay. ICPP. <laughs> um, this is happening in Kemmerer, Wyoming. We said we talk about Wyoming. Here we go. First of all, I've never heard of the town of Kemmerer. That's a really weird town name. It, it sounds like a drunk guy saying, come here. <laughs> Kem- Kemmerer. Your past splurgery looks terrible. <laughs> so Bill Gates, world-renowned philanthropist and Mr. Microchip, Bill Gates has an energy company. What company doesn't he have? I mean, realistically, come on. Yeah. Like, didn't he buy Bragg's apple cider vinegar? Pretty sure that he's got a finger in every pot. And he's using um, the apple cider from his apple orchard that he also owns i don't know anyway he's got an energy company too you know you'd think that it would be steve jobs who did that you would think but you would think that bill gates would avoid apples (laughs) right right 
Anyway, he's got an energy company. They're starting construction at their Wyoming site in Camera <laughs> for a next generation nuclear power plant. He believes will revolutionize, revolutionarize. I'm sorry, that word is revolutionize how power is generated. Wow. Okay. So I guess it's a different kind of nuclear power plant we have. Which is kind of wild already because nuclear power is already such a different kind of power. Yeah. You know? I guess we have a light water reactor plant. Okay. And this natrium plant is considered a significant improvement because they're more efficient, use less concrete and steel. Oh. Can be built faster. And they take advantage of natural forces like gravity and thermodynamics to Mm. cool the reactor in case of an unexpected shutdown. Okay. I guess they use sodium-cooled fast reactors and molten salt mm-hmm. energy storage systems to integrate with grids that have higher level. I don't understand any of this stuff. <laughs> I was going to say, the whole time I'm just sort of smiling and nodding like, okay. <laughs> but it, it sounds simpler and cooler, almost yeah. literally, than right, the reactors right. we've got going on today. And I did just look up their Marvel reactor, which is the newest one they're putting in. That's the one we talked about. Yeah. yeah. And it does look like that one is going to be a natrium reactor. Okay. That's also based on the AI overview. So I guess I could technically be wrong, but... Those things drive me nuts. (laughs) Right? Because sometimes they're wrong. Right. Yeah. Like, have you noticed Facebook has introduced new um, AI questions that you can ask if you're too lazy to type your own question? Really? Yeah. And you'll see a story about, let's say, the Teton Pass... Okay. And one of the questions is, what are mountains? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> What's a pass? Right. You know, <laughs> Thanks, <no>. AI. <laughs> You're making us dumber. <laughs> and speaking of dumb, no, wait, that's not the setup I want for this. <laughs> okay. I, I don't want to sway the jury. I don't want to lead the witness. I don't want to put my thumb on the scale. Okay. I don't want to taint the survey. Speaking of um, TikToks, uh-huh. I, I saw a story about a TikTok this week. Okay. Then I went and watched the TikTok. It's about a conservative family that moved from California to Idaho to be a, in a conservative state. Right. And after three years, they've decided they're moving because they can't stand it. Yeah. Which is sort of funny because I feel like that's what everybody tells people to do. Like, oh, well, if you don't like that your state is a red state, move to a blue state. Da, da, da. Right. You know, and now these people have done it and they're like, still not for me. Now, I'm sure they have their reasons. Right. But I don't think they're the ones expressed in the TikTok. Right. So since this is all public knowledge, I'm going to call her out. Her name is Corey Ray, Mm -hmm. and she lives in Idaho Falls. Yes. First off, I just want to say, Corey Ray, we're so glad you and your family decided to give Idaho Falls, Idaho a try. And if what you say happened to you in your TikTok video really happened, for that, I am truly sorry. I apologize on behalf of all Idaho Fallsonians. Yeah. Or whatever well, we call and I, ourselves. I don't think it's reflective of all of Idaho Falls. I think maybe she just, if this is indeed true and this is how she feels, mm-hmm. I think maybe she just found herself in a clicky neighborhood. Right. Or right, something. Which I think is very possible. But, but I'll tell you, let's go ahead and play some of this so you can kind of get the style of the video. Mm-hmm. So here they are doing what I would say is yet another synchronized dance. Cute family, by the way. Oh, super cute family. She's white. Husband's Mexican. She says things like, we're moving back to California because continuing to live in Idaho would mean we would need to be judgmental. Gossip about others. I'm with you so far, actually, Corey Mm -hmm. Ray. I think you met the wrong people, but I could see how that could happen. Have our kids forget to say please and thank you. Eh. Yeah, no. Where's the press X to doubt meme? (laughs) Right? I'm going to stop you right there. (laughs) Nowhere in America are people ostracized for having kids that do say please and thank you. Yeah, no. First things first, like with anything on the internet, especially with things like TikTok, in order for something to go viral, nine times out of ten, you have to either like condensed to the point of making it more um, impactful. In- inaccurate. Or you have to hyper uh, hyperbolize. Right. You know, which I would and say. And it worked. It yeah. worked, Corey Ray. It worked. You you did what you wanted to do. In her TikTok, she didn't mention racism at all. No. But in the article, it did. Well, hang on. It wasn't the article I read. It was a tweet from a dude who, like you said, 
reduced it down to an inaccurate representation of what happened. Right. Chris Evans uh, on Twitter as not Captain America tweeted, so a conservative Mexican family Mm -hmm. on TikTok left California for Idaho because they wanted to live in a red state with other Republicans. And they posted a video about how they're moving back because it sucks. Subjective. We don't think so. Right. And everyone's racist. So I am sort of interested in hearing your take on this because yes. you are a white woman who mm-hmm. was married to a Mexican. I definitely saw a couple of instances of racism when I was with my Mexican, which he allows me to call him. So it's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's accurate. So I think that's fine. He's a pretty nice dude. <laughs> he also used to live in California, by the way. Okay. So he's got like a really good perspective on this, yeah. you know. Um, but basically he said that a lot of the racism that you experience here isn't malicious. It's more just people being kind of ignorant. <laughs> exactly. Ignorant yeah. of the culture. Yeah. Like one example he gave is uh, when he was working customer service, he would like, um, you know, s- inevitably someone would ask him where he was from, which didn't really happen to any of his coworkers that he saw, which uh, okay. I can attest to because at one point I was his coworker. Okay. That's how we met. Um, but yeah, like no one else would get asked that but him. He also does have a little accent, so it might not necessarily be because he's not white. It could be because he's got a little accent. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyway, they'd ask him where he was from, and then when he'd say Mexico, they'd be like, oh, so you must love tacos, or like, oh, hola, you know, como estas? (laughs) Like, yeah, they'd get kind of cringe and like try to go a little, like they'd try to act Mexican. Oh, I have a Mexican friend. Right. (laughs) Right. Yeah. 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 And super cringe. So it was mostly born and bred out of, I don't know, the novelty of meeting somebody of a different race and culture or just a lack of experience with that rather than malicious intent. They just acted dumb because they they were ignorant. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Hint like a person. Yeah. Yeah. It's really not that hard. Do I have that right? That would be correct. Yeah. So, yeah, I won't say her experience is wrong. I'm just going to say that I, based on my own very similar experience, very much doubt it. Yeah. One other thing that I read in the article was, Mm -hmm. I guess, a a realtor from Seattle who moved to Idaho to be in a more conservative state uh, referred to people, just West Coasters, Mm -hmm. as cows. Oh, funny. Okay. And I was like, well, I'd never heard that acronym before. Uh Uh-huh. But they're California, Oregons, and Washingtonians. Oh, okay. Okay. Or Oregonites. I don't know I, what we could. I actually kind of like that because yeah. they're, they're sort of moving over like a herd. Well, <laughs> yeah, maybe they're migrating. Yeah. Sure, yeah. They're, they're herding. Yeah. Uh, you know, Idaho was the top choice for Californians in 2021 and 2022. Right, which is kind of wild. Right. And, and that's, I guess, the other thing I'd like to say is I've helped plenty of cows buy homes in Idaho Falls. Mm-hmm. And they're still here. Yeah, I think that really this can be a great community for a lot of people who want to get out of bigger cities and stuff like that. I think that overall we do have actually a pretty inclusive bunch of folks if you find the right ones. Right. If you happen to fall into a really clicky group of people, that's going to suck. But that's not all there is here. But I bet they say please and thank you. Okay. <laughs> all right. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Last thing on our list. I, I saw this super cute because I want to end with a little frivolousness. Yeah. Especially after singing about Snoop Catty <laughs> Cat. Love it. Um, meow, 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 yippee yo, yippee yay. <laughs> Aww, okay. I, I love how much work <laughs> you put into that. That's actually really sweet and funny. <laughs> well, I was just singing it in my head all day and because right? I knew we were going to talk about it. Okay. Um, I saw a tweet. I wish every pet owner would release an album of songs they make up for their pets. <laughs> and I thought... How did you know? <laughs> well, they must have a pet. <laughs> so do you have songs for your pets that you make up? I do, mm-hmm. as a matter of fact. I know you have very sing-songy ways of calling them. Yeah, I have one for each if you want. Okay, so you have two cats. I do. Leo, uh-huh. who I refer to as Chubba Lumpkins. Yes, And Coco, she is Skinny Stiltson. Uh-huh. And then Rango, the terrible... Chihuahua. He's not <laughs> terrible. He's my good sweet boy. <laughs> All right. So yeah. let's start with Leo. Okay. So Leo, he's a big old crybaby and he loves to be held. So he'll let you know by screaming at you. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> sometimes to sort of 
satisfy him until I can pick him up, I'll go, Hi, my name is Leon. I like to cry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. It's nice, right? So you kind of sing back to him as he's I, I meowing do. at you. Yeah, I sing back the song of his people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's Coco, who I refer to as Coquita Mi Morcita Yita Goyal. But Yita sometimes Goyal. I'll go, Yita Goyal. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's the one So I it'll know. be more, Coquita Mi Morcita Yita Goyal. And she will yeah. most of the time come running. <laughs> oh, she loves it. Yeah. Yeah, that's how she knows. Uh-huh. Um, and then there's Rango. Who, <laughs> I don't really call Rango. I So I started calling him my little beanie baby, which got shortened to beanie, which got shortened to bean. Uh, and then he broke his penis a while ago. Yes. So then it changed to Venus penis. It was a few episodes back. <laughs> So now I now I call him Senorito Venus Penis. <laughs> <laughs> and I guarantee he's going to come running into the studio after hearing that. Uh-huh. He'll think it's time for a T R E A T. <laughs> yes, he will. Yeah. He will. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. That's so cute. It's kind of funny. <laughs> so I um I have two songs. Uh-huh. The first one was when I um clean out the litter box. Mm-hmm. I would say, "Hey, ask me what's in this." <laughs> to one of my kids and uh they'd say what's in it <laughs> and i said it's a big old bag of pee and poo and they had to it was sort of a call and response they would have to say for me and you <laughs> for me and you they'd have to yeah, be I as excited were, like, the worst. about it as i was <laughs> and then I wanted to make treat time special, right? At six o'clock or whenever right. I got done with my real estate stuff. Right. <laughs> the grumpy guys say, well, you the big dog's got to eat first. You're supposed to eat before you tr- feed your animals. Yeah. But I don't want them up in my business while I'm cooking. Right. So I would always feed the cats tuna before making dinner. Right. And I'd always make it a big production so they knew damn well Mm -hmm. that was tuna time. This is happening. It's happening right now. It's going down. (laughs) Yeah. And then when it's done, it's done. Yeah. And you've seen me use hand signals like no more. Yes. Which Rango has gotten really good about. Yeah. Yeah. And that that means no more chicken, buddy. Mm -hmm. When I'm tearing apart that Costco chicken. Mm -hmm. By the way. So, you know, Costco chickens are four ninety nine, dollars Right. R- they're rotisserie chickens. Uh-huh. I just noticed this at the other day. Sam's has them for four ninety eight. dollars Beat that, Costco. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get in a de-escalation. Let's get in a deflation <laughs> war. Yeah, I like that. Anti-McDonald's yeah. style. Anyway, so Hot I would- like a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. go ahead. I would jiggle the tuna packet because mm-hmm. I buy the packets because there's so much more. Thank you, inventor of the tuna packet. <laughs> more convenient than opening a can. Okay. I do love keeping a couple of tuna packets in my purse in case I get hungry. Quick protein. Mm-hmm. Well, and they have all these great flavors now. Yeah. Yeah. The little tuna creations. Uh, yeah. They ranch rule. and barbecue. And- oh, oh the, the spicy, the sweet, spicy chili, Thai chili. Oh, wow. Oh, that one's really good, too. That seems yeah. It's but also no, you it's like great. You and Jesse both like those warm tuna melts. I do love a tuna melt. I think they're just good. Oh, hot tuna. <laughs> anyway, I would say I'd flap the tuna packet and go, It's howdy tuna time. It's howdy tuna time. <laughs> That's cute. And and then I I don't remember the rest of the rhyme, but mm-hmm. I would. I think I would change it. I was like, I got to record this once. Yeah, you you would change it up every time. Every time. Because I sang it with you a few times, and I would also help you change up the lyrics. Right. Yeah. I think one time you sang, aren't you so glad that I'm making up this rhyme? Yeah, or something, something like, like that. <laughs> I was just like, damn, she got it already. <laughs> yeah. Aren't you glad that I'm doing some tuna time? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what songs do you sing to your pets? <laughs> Ooh, I'm so excited to hear about that. <laughs> There's a TikTok <laughs> bit for you. Right? Corey Ray. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I saw another um, TikTok bit, too, of this girl holding her dog, and she's like, look, I get that it annoys people when people talk to their pets weird, but we have to do it, because yeah. otherwise they don't know, unless we talk like this, you know, because, like, they don't know. They don't understand English. Right. Yeah, so you got to put on a silly little voice so that your silly little friend knows that you're saying a silly little thing to them. They know you're communicating with them. Yeah. 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 Well, that's our show. 
Uh, make sure you let the algorithm know that you want more of this by subscribing. Uh, use that special little link below. Uh, and if you feel really saucy, maybe go to one of your other favorite platforms and subscribe there. And make sure you stay hydrated. I'm going to stay carbohydrated. That's the way to do it. Celebrating that Pioneer Day weekend with some funeral potatoes. Ooh. Okay. I mean, you had mm, me at funeral mm. potatoes. Let's go. Smoochie boochies. <laughs>